This is lecture 1.6 and I will talk about generating functions. So this is the last lecture about combinatorics and I want to discuss another approach to uh, proving a formula for Catalan numbers. So let me remind you that we proved last time that Cn equals 1 over n plus 1 to n choose n and the proof was quite involved with all these combinatorics of pass on a lattice and I want to give another proof. So uh, for that I want to discuss a very general idea which is an idea of a generating function. Generating function. So um, basically um, the idea is as follows. So let's consider a sequence. So a0, a1, up to an, and so on is a sequence. And um, I can assume that my numbers are um, maybe integers or rational numbers or real numbers and later on we'll consider complex numbers as well. That absolutely does not matter. And then, um, so informally speaking, the idea is to substitute this sequence with a function. So a function f of t, which is equal to an infinite sum, a uh, k t power k for k from 0 to infinity. So it's kind of a power series, a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus and so on. And, um, and then one can sort of reconstruct coefficients from the function and um, informally the, the relation will be that a n will be um, the nth derivative of f at zero uh, and then we divide by n factorial, I guess. Um, but of course all of that is very uh, imprecise and the reason is very simple because if we want to think of this as a function we probably assume that it converges at least for some t but for certain sequences this function might never exist just because for all t this power series might uh, diverge and so uh, let me kind of suggest two approaches here so uh, in some cases Um, uh, the power series uh, converges. Power series, uh, this one, let me call it star. Power series star converges for t um, less than epsilon for some epsilon. And uh, if this is the case, then one can indeed talk of f as a function of t, where t might be a real or complex variable. Uh, and then, so then, uh, a function f of t uh, will be called a generating function of a sequence. Um, but in some other interesting cases, this function might not exist in a sense that the power series maybe uh, diverges. And then one can consider, so alternatively, so uh, maybe in general, we consider f of t as a formal expression. So what I mean by that is that I just, I don't mean that I can plug in t and evaluate it or something like that. I just write down a formal expression where I write this sum and uh, then I can introduce some operations like what is an addition of such functions and multiplication and power and substitution and so on and uh, I operate with them um, as if they are kind of infinite polynomials, so just term by term. 
And um, in algebra, there is something called formal power series. So if F is some field, there is a notion of a ring of formal power series uh, in this variable T. And then F will be exactly an element of this, of this ring. But uh, uh, I'm not going to formally talk about that. Um, so um, let me discuss some examples and I will maybe uh, uh, try to explain the difference between this more functional and more formal approach. So here are some examples. So examples. So probably the simplest one is when we take a zero equal a one equal and so on equal say to one. So just the sequence is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then this f of t, whatever it is, should be the sum 1 plus t plus t squared plus and so on. And, um, uh, and of course, I know that for, for t uh, absolute value less than 1, uh, this power series converges, converges, and then one can write it as actually 1 over 1 minus t. So this is a sum of um, uh, decreasing uh, geometric progression. So um, in a sense, uh, uh, indeed f of t is a function, except it is defined by this power series only for t less than 1. Um, on the other hand, I can think of it as purely formal expression. And then what this equality means, uh, it means that if I take 1 minus t, and multiplied on this power series 1 plus t plus t squared and so on. So these are both kind of expressions of this type, so infinite expressions with coefficients times powers of t. And then I can open brackets, and when I open them, uh, I can easily check uh, degree by degree what happens. So uh, I will have only one term in degree 1, and then with degree t, uh, uh, with degree 0, and then with degree 1 I will have 1 plus minus 1 times t plus 1 plus minus 1 times t squared and so on and I see that I can continue multiplying them and um, uh, and and uh, basically uh, everything beyond power k does not interfere with the result up to power k. So um, this multiplication is well defined and, and then uh, I just say that then I can compute this coefficient twice coefficient by coefficient, and I get zeros everywhere, and so eventually the answer is 1. So, uh, so this is a kind of a more formal way to operate with infinite uh, power series, and this is a functional way. So in this particular example, I can do either. So another example uh, is that I can take um, 1 plus t power n, uh, and this will be a sum, as we know, n0 plus n1 t plus n so on, plus n n t power n. And so I can say that 1 plus t power n is a generating function, function for uh, sequence n0, to the, the n n and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's up a 0 up to a n. And then just a n plus 1 equals to 0. So uh, again, I can think of it as a formal expression and multiply formally 1 plus t n times, or I can see of it as a function and then it will be a function which is convergent for arbitrary t because it's uh, finite. So. Okay, but uh, then I can uh, consider some uh, other examples where um, uh, where this difference between formal expressions and functions becomes more striking. So let's take the following. Uh, let's define the following thing. So definition. So consider um, alpha, um, some number. I can say real or complex. That doesn't matter. And then define alpha choose n, so n here is greater or equal than 0, uh, and n is, is uh, an integer. Uh, and I define it as alpha times alpha minus 1 times alpha minus n plus 1 divided by n factorial. 
So uh, notice that uh, for alpha in n, alpha n is a usual binomial coefficient. And um, uh, that's obvious. Uh, but uh, this definition works for arbitrary, um, arbitrary alpha. Um, so I can view this, uh, think of this thing as a polynomial in alpha. So that's a polynomial uh, with rational coefficients in a variable alpha. OK, so and then I get a sequence. So consider a sequence. So consider a sequence. Um, uh, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, and so on, and then I just continue forever. So if alpha is not um, an integer, there is no reason to stop at any moment. And then, so I associate to it a generating function. So uh, the corresponding generating function will be denoted by 1 plus t power alpha, and that's by definition alpha to 0 plus alpha just one t plus and so on. So that's an infinite power series with coefficients which are polynomial polynomials in alpha. This is one, this is alpha, and then it's alpha, alpha minus one over two, and so on. And now this thing is not, uh, uh, so, so, so it, it, it is convergent or not depending on t and alpha, and let me not even discuss that. So, but, uh, but still I can prove the following statement. So it's a little exercise that 1 plus t power alpha times 1 plus t power beta equals 1 plus t power alpha plus beta. And to check that, one does not need to know uh, what this uh, uh, 1 plus t power alpha actually means. Uh, so what, what one does, one writes down this expression for alpha, for beta, for alpha plus beta, and multiplies it. And when you multiply two of this infinite power series, uh, at each moment you need to uh, uh, sum and multiply only finite number of terms. You never need to do operations with infinitely many terms. And so this uh, equality makes sense for formal expressions. You don't need to know convergence to be able to say that. And that's an exercise. So one can prove it by um, basically opening brackets, induction, and uh, other other ways. Okay. So um, now I have uh, what I have is in general a correspondence between sequences uh, and uh, this generating functions, which are actually what's called formal power series. And formal means I don't care about convergence again, and so now assume that for a sequence a0, a1, and so on, I got a corresponding power series a of t equal a0 plus a1t plus and so on. And for b0, b1, and so on, I got the corresponding power series b of t equal b0 plus b1t and so on. So uh, for formal power series, uh, I can do various operations. So I can add multiply them, uh, and this is because every time I want to add or multiply two power series uh, to compute each coefficient, I need to do just finitely many operations. Um, then there are some other things I can try to do. For instance, I can take and substitute a of t with a of t squared. And again, it just means plugging in uh, inside, so I had a0 plus a1t plus and so on, and it will go to a0 plus a1t squared plus and so on. And, um, and that makes total sense because, again, to perform this operation at every moment, I just need to know um, uh, to do operations only with finitely many numbers. I don't need to sum up infinite sequences. But in general, for instance, a uh, of t plus 1 is not defined. And the reason is because if you just think how you would define it, you plug in instead of tt plus 1, and when you open brackets by, say, binomial formula, z0 coefficient will be a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus and so on. So you cannot do such operations with power series, but others you can do. And I don't want to go into all details of what one can and cannot do, uh, but uh, um, you'll see in examples uh, how that might work. Uh, by the way, another operation which one can do is take a of t and take the derivative prime t 
and if it was a0 plus a1t plus and so on, it will go to a1 plus a2 uh, 2a2t plus uh, 3a3t squared plus and so on. So, um, okay, let's, let's uh, see what that means. So basically, um, uh, I have the following operation on sequences which corresponds to adding their generating functions. And this is addition. So um, I define cn by definition an plus bn for n greater or equal than zero. And then its generating function c of t will be the sum of the corresponding generating functions of my original two sequences. Um, and uh, also I can define multiplication. So cn uh, now equals to uh, sum from k equal to zero to n a k b n minus k. Um, and uh, uh, so I can write down the first couple of terms, a0, b0, a1, b0 plus a0, b1, uh, a2, uh, b0 plus a1, b1 plus a0, b2, and so on. And of course, that's exactly the rule how I multiply two kind of infinite polynomials power series. So c of t equals a of t times b of t. Um, so in a sense, uh, uh, that's basically how I define addition and multiplication of power series. And then uh, I can check, for instance, a little exercise. Um, one is that I can take one minus t and one, uh, multiply it on one plus t plus t squared plus and so on, and you get one. And you check it using these formulas, basically. Uh, and two, so one can see when one can invert a power series. So let's suppose that uh, uh, so uh, uh, there exists b of t such that a of t times b of t equals to 1. Um, uh, so uh, suppose a0 is not equal to 0, so then there exists b of t such that a of t times b of t equal to 1. So you can basically divide on any power series which starts uh, with uh, something which is not 0. For instance, 1 over 1 minus t minus t squared uh, is a well-defined object, and I can even write it down. So um, what I do, uh, I mean, I can, for instance, just think that I take 1 over 1 minus s equal 1 plus x plus s squared plus and so on, and substitute t plus t squared here. And I will get 1 plus t plus t squared plus t plus t squared squared plus and so on. And I can easily see that basically terms after uh, t plus t squared power n will have t in at least power n. And so for each particular power of t, only finitely many terms will contribute to it. So basically, there is a way to find out what are coefficients of this function. And actually, uh, it's an exercise in homework. So the, if, you, if you expand everything here, you'll get f0 plus f1t plus f2t squared plus and so on, where this is a famous sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers. And that's a generating function of Fibonacci numbers. OK, so um, let me now apply this idea to uh, uh, the problem we solved last time to find a formula for Catalan numbers. So what is the strategy? So the strategy is basically to start with um, a sequence of Catalan numbers, and then write down the corresponding function, which we think of this formal expression, so we don't care whether it converges or not. And then um, use uh, the recurrence for Fibonacci numbers to write down a functional equation for this function, solve it, find the corresponding function, and then um, use some other facts we know to uh, write down the corresponding coefficients. OK, so Fibonacci numbers. So let's uh, consider the function c of t equals c0 plus c1t plus c2t squared plus c3t cubed plus and so on. And these are Fibonacci numbers, so I can even write it down at least the beginning part. Uh, 
plus and so on. Okay, so let me recall that what I know is that Cn equals to C0, Cn minus 1, plus C1, Cn minus 2, plus and so on, plus Cn minus 1, C0. Okay, so how can I use it to find a formula for this function? So let's consider the square of C of t. So this will be C0 squared plus C0, C1, C1, C0, uh, t plus C0, C2, C1, C1, C2, C0, t squared plus and so on. And then I can use my recurrence to see exactly what happens. So that's actually C2, that's actually C3, and so on. So after I square up my function, I get something very close to it. And then if I take t times c of t squared, uh, I will get basically the same terms as for c of t starting with degree 2. And then I subtract c of t. And what I get is c0 squared t uh, minus uh, c0 minus uh, c1t. Um, okay. Um, so what is that? C0 squared is 1, C1 is 1, so this is 1, and C0 is uh, 1, so it's minus 1. So basically, what I got is an equation, T C of T squared minus C of T plus 1 equal to 0. And then I can look for solutions. And what does that mean? So of course that means exactly finding power series, so that if you take this power series, plug it in here, square it up, subtract and so on, you get zero term by term. So how one can do it? So one can try, of course, to apply the uh, formula. So we have um, the formula for quadratic uh, equation, um, which will be one, plus minus square root b squared minus 4t divided by a to, to a. And a priori there are two solutions, uh, but actually if one tries to find solution with minus here, uh, sorry, solution with uh, plus here, this won't work. So, so when the sign, when uh, the sign here is plus, so one can just not divide this power series by 2t. Uh, and one can easily show, it's a little exercise maybe, that then uh, uh, basically what it means, it means that, uh, so 1 plus square root 1 minus 4t is not equal to anything times 2t. And the reason is very simple, because if you try to compute this power series, again, finding the square root of it by finding a power series which, which squares to it, uh, uh, then uh, uh, one will get non-zero coefficient uh, of degree zero. So basically, we have to take minus sign here. And so, uh, so uh, eventually, uh, the function c of t should be equal to 1 minus square root 1 minus 4t divided by 2t. So again, what means a square root? It means a certain power series whose square equals to 1 minus 4t. And the question is how to find it. And um, again, uh, I'm not going to, to, to... Oh, actually, actually, maybe it already was an exercise. So I can use Newton's formula. So remember, we had a formula 1 uh, 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 plus s power alpha equals 1 plus alpha 1s plus alpha 2 s squared plus and so on. And so I can use it here and write it as um, 1 minus and then 1 minus 1 half choose 1 times 40 plus 1 half choose 2 times 40 squared uh, minus uh, 
um, one half choose three times 40 cube um, and so on divided by 2t okay and that's something we can compute and uh, the reason why this power series actually gives the square root of 1 minus 4t is because this power series is what I called uh, uh, 1 minus 4t power 1 half so it's alpha equal 1 half and remember I proved that when I multiply to such things uh, 1 minus 4t power 1 half uh, I will get 1 minus 4t power 1, which one can easily check, is just 1 minus 4t. So, so basically, I, 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 from the exercise I formulated in the beginning, it follows that uh, uh, this power series is a square root of 1 minus 4t, if you uh, think of square root as something which squares to uh, 1 minus 4t. Okay, and so now from here I can theoretically just get a formula for Catalan numbers, and let me do it now. Okay, so it follows from here that Cn equals uh, minus 1 power n. So let me copy um, 1 half choose 1 half uh, from 1 half over t minus 1 choose n. 1 half choose n plus 1 times 4t, uh, sorry, 4 power n. Is it right? 4 power uh, n times 4 uh, n plus 1. So that's the answer. So Catalan number should be this. And of course it looks surprising because it looks nothing like the formula we had before and especially because of this 1 half choose n plus 1 thing, but we can expand it. So that's uh, 2 power 2n plus 2 minus 1, 2n plus 1, uh, minus 1 choose n, and then I just write it explicitly, so it's 1 half, 1 half minus 1, and so on up to 1 half minus uh, n plus 1 uh, minus 1 minus n, divided by uh, n plus 1 factorial, which equals to, okay, so we have a lot of one-halves here, and so the number of them equals to, so from 0, 1 up to n, so there are n plus 1 powers here, so I can uh, write here 2 power n, uh, and then I multiply by minus 1 everywhere, and then I get uh, 2 minus 1 times and so on, up to 2n minus 1. Uh, so it will be 2 minus 1, uh, 4 minus 1, and so on, up to 2n minus 1, divided by n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so that looks very much like 2n factorial, except to get 2n factorial, I need to multiply on 2n uh, 2n minus 2 and so on, so all even numbers up to 2 and divide by it. Uh, and then on top I got 2n factorial because this is product of all odd numbers and this is product of all even numbers less or equal than 2n divided by n plus 1 factorial. And then uh, this is 2 power n times n factorial. So 2 power, power n cancels out, and so I get 2 n factorial, n plus 1 factorial, n factorial, which is 1 over n plus 1, 2 n choose n. Okay, so that's the end. So um, that's the, the computation of Catalan numbers with the help of a method of generating functions. So again, let me kind of outline a strategy. So suppose, so goal is to uh, so you have a sequence A0, uh, An is a sequence, and then you want to, um, for instance, find a formula for it, find a formula, formula for it, 
And then what you do, so first you uh, form a generating function a of t equal a0 plus a1t plus and so on. So then you maybe find equation for the function, an equation for a of t, and this can be a differential equation or a functional equation of some sort, or maybe indeed algebraic equation like what we had, and then you solve it and find an explicit formula for a of t, and then uh, uh, get a formula for the sequence. Formula for uh, a n. So that's exactly what we did now, and in homework you need to do the same thing for Fibonacci numbers. So this is the end of the combinatorics part of the uh, apprentice program, and uh, I want to move on and talk uh, about isometries of Euclidean plane and complex numbers in relation between them, um, so that we uh, later will be able to uh, start talking about non-Euclidean geometry.